Well, Amega, welcome to all of you. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. And I want to welcome you, of course, uh, to this uh, live stream with a special uh, guest and special brother, uh, Brother Hossein Mashni, known also as Steve Mashni. I am uh, so thankful, of course, for this wonderful opportunity. And believe me, uh, me and him have been trying to do this for a couple of days now. And uh, just uh, things seem not to be um, working out well at times, uh, whether internet, whether uh, scheduling, whether other aspects, but I'm thankful that the Lord allowed this to happen right now. Just a quick update about my health. Many of you have been asking. Um, I have to say, folks, um, I'm still not doing well. Um, I need your prayers and I need your uh, just um, just support. Um, uh, you know, I love your encouraging words. I love your notes that you sent to me. So continue to, uh, to lift us up in prayers. The, the attacks come from different angles, including health, of course. But um, Slowly and gradually, I'm trying to gather myself and come back to uh, the normal way of doing things, and hopefully we'll be able to do that. All that to say is that hopefully you will find today's show to be very encouraging. Of course, uh, uh, I, what I love about our brother uh, is that uh, he does a lot of wonderful things uh, publicly, and uh, he does not really uh, shy from um, sharing the truth. And uh, one of the things that... Uh, uh, he and I have tried last time is that he came to my show and we shared clips related to, um, you know, controversial issues that has to do with uh, Islamic teachings or historical uh, things related to the religion of Islam. Today is no exception. Today, uh, we are going to show you clips of people who have reacted to the age of Aisha and the fact that she was a child bride to a prophet who was uh, 51 years of age when he proposed to her and she was six, at least according to the most common traditional uh, sources, and consummated the marriage when she was nine and he was, of course, 54 years of age. All that to say is that we hope today that you will just see the reaction that people will have and we will unpack for you some of these reactions. Now, let me turn my attention to our guest. Brother, thank you so much for uh, your wonderful ministry, your wonderful work. You're, you're such an inspiration to myself and others. And I thank the Lord for you and for your boldness and for your love for Muslims, because you're not doing it because you want to mock them. You're not doing it because you want to ridicule them. Rather, your hope and intent is to open their eyes to the truth. And as you have stated it correctly to me before the show started, that you've discovered that many of them really did not know a whole lot of uh, details about this, which is pretty sad, by the way. It's almost a blind leading, you know, following a blind leader and uh, you know where that ends usually. So brother, um, the topic of um, Aisha's age, as you know, is extremely sensitive uh, to our Muslim friends for obvious reasons, uh, you know, and, and I don't blame them for that. But you know, there are so many debates, sadly, that uh, Islamic scholars all of a sudden want to debate now whether she was uh, at the age of six or at the age of seven or nine or 10 or 12 or 17 or all that kind of stuff. And all of these contradictions, by the way, indicate one thing. When you start focusing on something, that means that something is causing you trouble and you're trying to somehow cover it up. That's just the way I see it. Now, I'm going to speak for myself. I really didn't care about the age of Aisha. All I was uh, I grew up uh, basically learning that the prophet married many wives and Aisha was one of his favorites. And when I discovered later that it was an issue, I was able to justify it based on what I was taught that, hey, God is in his wisdom, allowed the prophet to marry a young bride who after he died, continued the tradition of sharing, you know, many of his teachings that she has learned. But what about you, brother? I mean, what did you know about the whole thing? Well, I, I did not know about this, you know, when I, I was I was so young, you know, when I was a Muslim and we were just taught the good things, you know, about Layla to Qadr and, you know, and wishes and all, <laughs> you know, I mean, I was taught in school in the Middle East for three years. I went to first, second and third grade at a madrasa, you know, in the in the West Bank. And so. I knew about, you know, prayer and all that stuff and about Muhammad and in fact about Jesus not being the son of God and all that stuff. But about Aisha, you know, I really didn't know about it when I was young. 
you know, and I found out when I was, uh, I found out, you know, when I got older, when I started studying Islam, like I, I think I've told you this, that when I became a Christian, I didn't want nothing to do with Islam. I wanted to get as far away from it as possible. Didn't want to study it, didn't want nothing. But as I got older, I realized I have a responsibility here to go back to my people and to speak to them, you know, because I have some experience. And I just want to add one thing, too, to this. It's not just about embarrassing Muslims. It's not about like, oh, look at your prophet. How about, you know, but this is a very, it's a very devastating social issue as well, because men are still marrying little girls because of what Muhammad did. And and so, you know, they could say what they want on CNN and, and, and at Harvard University, but in the Middle East, they don't have any qualms with it. And these old men are still marrying little girls because of what Muhammad did. So this is a very serious social issue in addition to being a theological problem. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. And of course, um, you find this uh, in Yemen a lot, uh, by the way, uh, this tradition. And uh, of course, when you ask uh, why or if you react to it, they'll, they'll mention that the prophet uh, married uh, at that age. Um, you know, they'll mention that the culture promotes something like this, although at least uh, from my own experience in Yemen, at least the, the girl will be 14 years of age or 13, you know, still, of course, I'm not trying to justify it, still far different than when you say someone was six yeah. and uh, married at uh, the age of nine. I was watching a documentary the other day uh, concerning uh, uh, the polygamy and the fundamentalist uh, Mormon church. Uh, all that to say is that you would have these women who married at the age of 13 or 14, and they were devastated. And I kept thinking, it's like, wow, I mean, poor, uh, you know, women, they were devastated because they were 13 or 14. Imagine if we share now about the age of Aisha and how people will react to that. And, and sadly, of course, people try to justify it. Uh, even Westerners sometimes who are not interested in hurting feelings, they want to try to justify that that could be cultural, you know, let us not go there and so on and so forth. So with that in mind, I, I understand from you that you, you have a number of clips that you want to show, uh, sure. you know, from your in, encounters. But before we get to that, I want to, of course, welcome those of you who are joining us and a special welcome really to Sister Nada Verse. I haven't seen her in a while, and she's an amazing, amazing, of course, not only, um, uh, you know, moderator, but uh, sister in Christ. Uh, so welcome to you. I want to welcome also Brother Phil. Um, I'm going to just uh, go, Phil uh, Horea. Uh, thank you so much for taking time to be with us. I know it's still early where you're at, but uh, praise the Lord for that. And I think uh, LJ is here. These are amazing moderators, brother, and uh, I, I, I don't know what I would do without them. And I want to welcome those of you also who are joining us right now. So brother, tell us, first of all, how do you collect these uh, clips? Like, where do you go typically? Um, you know, I live in an area in California The I'm in Southern California and there's a place called Little Arabia. I live near there and I just go out. I just set up a table. My table says, I'm come talk to me about Jesus in English and Arabic. And I usually sit in a place where there's lots of Muslims. There's a supermarket that I've been a lot. I got kicked out of there. Three times they called the police on me. The last time I was kicked out, told that I have to get off the property. Why? And, Are you that much of a threat? <laughs> it, oh, dude, you should have seen this. You you should have seen this thing, man. I was like, I'm, 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 I'm getting my table ready because I'm getting to leave, ready to leave because I was invited to dinner. And three police cars came. One 100 feet behind me, one to my left, one to my right. All of these are black SUVs, police. And they're all watching me as the policeman confronts me. And he comes and he says, you have to leave. You can't come on the property. If you come back, we'll arrest you. And, uh, and, I, and he said, but you can go out to the sidewalk. I said, on the sidewalk is public property. So that's what I do now. I just go on the, on the sidewalk and I just stand there. And uh, I get people. I get a lot of the a lot of the videos you're going to see are from the sidewalk, and uh, and so you know that the, this corner is turning into Sharia corner. Uh, you know, there's a Muslim bookstore there, Muslim uh, supermarket. Even though it's just an Arab, it's not just Muslim; it's Arab. But they have a big moon 
on their tie on their uh, symbol, you know, of the of the supermarket. I go there. There's another place I go, a bank where there's a lots of Muslims walk by there. There's another place like, you know, several places in Little Arabia. I just set up the table and then people and, and several people have talked to me, you know, and sometimes I've had good, really good conversations. I videotape, especially when there's women, because what happened one time I talked to this woman, you know, I was witnessing. Actually, she she started talking to me and she started telling me how what a kafir and all dog I am and all this stuff. And then she went and called the police on me and told the police that I'm chasing girls and I'm banging on their windows and stuff. So I film all my encounters. The police came. This was the second time the police came. <laughs> and I showed the police the video. I said, here's the video. Watch it. And all of this is on video. I got everything on video. And the police said, OK, you're cool, man. But the third time they came, they kicked me out. So they kicked me out to the street, uh, to the sidewalk. So I'm on the sidewalk now. It's public property. I could show you a video that happened this last week, but I but you told me you didn't want the F word. This has about a hundred F words. This guy only used about 10 words in all everything he said, but the F word he used about 50 times. That's why you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I mean, of course, we, we don't want to show it for, I mean, as you know, I mean, I'm just yeah. trying to you know, out of respect. This is different than the one I, this is different than the, the one that I'm, that I'm going to show. I, I did cut it out. out the okay. F but yeah. about what was he using the F word as a reaction to the story or to you? No, no, no. This guy, this other guy, he was, he was, he was mad at me. He was just. Um, I'm yeah, sorry, brother. Was, I mean, I, again, uh, we consider it an honor, of course, to uh, suffer for uh, Christ's uh, case. I mean, uh, uh, sake, I should say. But uh, again, what can you do? But uh, he's right, uh, the policeman about the sidewalk. Uh, I know when um, myself and Vocab in the past, uh, he invited me and others to go uh, to the mosque. And yes, we would stay outside in the sidewalk. I mean, it's frustrating to them still, you know, because they cannot do anything now. And uh, you're that right there in the sidewalk, you know, handing brochures and Bibles and all that kind of stuff. But in your case, you're even interviewing them. So we'll go ahead and show us the first clip and let's see if we can process you and I, uh, what's, what went on. Okay. Um, oops, I got to do this right. I did this wrong here. Okay. I'm getting the file. Okay. Now this is a couple of, uh, Imam sheikhs, or I don't know if they're sheikhs actually. I think they're, uh, I think they're just, uh, they just, this is on Friday. It was a bunch of, uh, young Young sheikh, are you, are you sharing are, it? Huh? Are you going to share it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, so you can just watch it here, and just then, then we'll talk about it. Okay. Uh, do you want me to put? Do I have to do something, or you do? It? No, I'm, I'm going to show it right now. There you go. I invite you to to study Islam uh -huh. and to learn about Habibi, Islam. Habibi, I know Islam well, ten times better than you. Hold on, let me finish. <laughs> and that. that's why I'll never follow it. Well, let me, Muhammad let me, let me married finish. a six-year-old girl named Aisha. Let he me. was fifty-one. Okay, can I? Joe was bint Omar has said this name. Who Omar was? There's 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 stories. Excuse me. There's stories in the Bible about people marrying girls younger than six. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, show it to me. There's a Bible. It's not there. Back in Muhammad, Joe was bint Omar. كان حبيبي في صحيح البخاري في صحيح مسلم في في الترمذي في ابن داود حبيبي Joe was bin Omar has said this anyway, anyway, he was married to a six year old he was 51 كان عمره 51 دخل عائشة قالت عائشة قالت ودخل فيها تعرف مكتوب وجوزها وهي ستة وبعدين دخل فيها وهي عمرها تسعة هو كان عمره أربعة وخمسين he was fifty four years old he had sex with her حبيبي صحيح البخاري صحيح البخاري صحيح الحديث هذا حديث محمد محمد قال خذ نص دينك من عائشة عائشة قالت عائشة it says take half your religion from عائشة عائشة said he married me when I was six and he was fifty one هذا قناعتك Hello, 
بالنسبة رافع حبيبي السلام عليكم اوكي جاب 46.9 حبيبي انا حبيتكم بترجعوا يو نيد تو بي اونست ويز يور سيلف اي ام اونست ام اونست ويز يو اند ويز يور بوكس يور ذا ون هوز ديس اونست يور ذا ون هوز كلوزينج يور ايز سو يو دونت سي حبيبي يو دونت يور كلوزينج يور ايز سو يو دونت سي واتس ان ذا سنه واتس واتس ان ذا حديث He, this, he doesn't. He knows true. Sahih al-Bukhari. It's right next to the Quran. I mean, if you give us Habib, a chance to talk, Sahih we can answer Bukhari everything you're saying. Muhammad married a six-year-old girl. Any, anyway, anyway, you're not giving us a chance to talk. What do you think of? Anyway. What do you think of a man who's 54 who marries Excuse a six-year-old girl? What do you think of that? He's a can pedophile. I, can I talk? Uh huh. What do you think of that? Do you approve of a 54-year-old man marrying sex with a nine-year-old girl? I yes, I do approve. You do approve. Yes. So let's just unpack the the the, the first part uh, of of uh, what took place. The one in Arabic. You obviously talking to a guy who was talking to you in Arabic, and it seemed like he was denying the fact that uh, such thing happened, or at least he began to distance himself from such hadith. You kept emphasizing to him that the story is found in what it, what we call Sahih Bukhari, meaning very authentic sayings of the prophet and he even said it's next to the quran meaning it's equal to the quran and it sounded like he's really distancing himself and he says he only followed god he follows the word of god the quran uh, what else happened in that uh, before and after um well these guys this was a friday fridays are always crazy fridays are insane i'm serious and uh and so these guys they're all wearing, you didn't see the other two guys, but they're wearing the hats and the long gowns. They just got out of mosque. They just got out of the mosque. And so they were like coming to me. They were ready to have at me, you know, with their dawah, you know. And so I just, I, I talked to them for almost a half hour, you know. And uh, and they they didn't know nothing, you know. It's just like unbelievable. And, and, you know, so, but you saw what happened at the very end of this. It was interesting. Is that what do you think of a 54 year old man having sex with a nine year old girl? Do you approve of that? And one of the guys said, Yeah, I do approve of it. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, he said that he does approve of it. And the other guy wants to point to the Bible, right? You know, he didn't, he doesn't want to talk about the Quran, but somehow he's an expert on the Bible. So, what is what is in the Bible that he wants it to show you? Did he mention that to you? You know, he didn't, but I've had this situation before, I'm sure you have too, where they talk about the oh, when it says. Uh, that they killed the young girls uh, in numbers or something like that. There's some story there, and it's it's so it's so off, you know what they said. And uh, I, he didn't say it. He just said, I, "I said, here's a Bible. Show it to me." He didn't he didn't know what he was yeah. talking about. But it was just see, this is there were several uh, methods of dealing with this. Number one, first of all, the guy didn't he called me a liar. Uh, secondly, he said it's not in the books. Thirdly, it's to deny the source, to say, no, I only believe in the Quran, you know, even though he said, I believe in the Quran and the Sunnah, you know. And then the other one is to, def to say, oh, it's look at what's in the Bible, you know, deflect what's in the Bible. And then finally, at the end, the guy says, yeah, I do approve, you know, a 54 year old man having sex with a nine year old girl. So there were several different reactions there. Yeah. Very similar. In the next uh, videos, you'll see very similar reactions to this, too. So are you saying that they were deflecting? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, deflecting. <laughs> you were distracting, you know, from the topic? Yeah. Well, they were... well, the Bible, when they said the Bible. In the Bible, yeah. you know, as okay. if. I'm just joking because that's exactly what happened. I'll, I'll put a post on Facebook and I'll say something. And all of a sudden, the topic uh, it begins to focus on the Trinity. And I'm like, I, I didn't put the word Trinity in the, in the post. Did I talk about the Trinity? I was talking about Muhammad. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's like, but the the, the father, the fa the older guy, they, these may have been his kids. I don't think so. One of them was an American who converted to Islam. The other one may have been his kid. And he knew he was in trouble. He knew he lost. He came, he wanted to show off to his kids. Let's tear this guy up. And then when he saw that the tables had turned, he he wanted to get out of there to get his kids out of there. And yeah. so, uh, but it was a good opportunity to plant some seeds. Absolutely. You're planting seeds, brother. That's all you're doing. You're planting seeds. Only uh, the Lord will bring growth to those. So, okay. So, um, show us the next clip, then. Okay. Okay. Now, um, um, all righty. Let's. Uh, okay. 
now this next one you got this is this was also on a friday okay well let's do a uh this is a very short one but <laughs> it's kind of funny but okay Okay, got three different brands. Three different brands. Hubs, Watch, and Duty. They said there's one Quran. No, there's three at least. They lied to you. They said there's one Quran. There are three different Qurans. They lied to you. Muhammad married a six year old girl named Aisha. Shut up. Uh huh. Muhammad married a six-year-old girl shut named Aisha. Muhammad Joe was bent on her sister's name is Amara Aisha. Muhammad Joe was bent on her sister's name is Amara Aisha. Muhammad Joe was bent on her sister's name is Amara Aisha. Into me just by one hand, can Amara one to five years old. Joe was bent on her sister's name. Muhammad Joe was bent on her sister's name. Her sister's name. Her sister's name. انت مش في سعودية هلا انت مش في سعودية انت مش في سعودية بس المسيح بحبك مات من اجلك على الصليب ليش؟ طب خليني اسالك سؤال خليني اسالك سؤال اوكي يو كان فينيش ات ناو but uh okay so uh, go ahead and explain to them uh what that lady was saying i, I mean i i heard what she was saying but but just go ahead and, and tell people what what was going on you know i was uh that particular day each day is different focus you know sometimes like today the focus was the blood of jesus removes sin you know that was over and over again that's why that day the focus was three korans i got three different korans come and look at them you know and i do i have the three physical korans and they're different colors that helps the, you know, the visual effect, you know? <laughs> and so I just hold them up and I say, see, there's three Korans. They told you there's one. They told me there's one. They lied to me, you know? And, uh, and then I said, you know, and Muhammad married a six year old girl, by the way. And then that's when the lady, she was just standing by her car and she starts like, you shut up, you shut up, shut up, you. <laughs> and then she said, she says, I'm going to, uh, and then, I'm not a hundred percent sure who she was talking about, but she said, she's going to send somebody to come for me. She said, I'm going to send them to get you, you know? <laughs> right. And that's, that's when you told her that you're not in Saudi, meaning like we don't have uh, religious police in here. Yeah. So uh, do, w what happened after that? Did she continue the conversation with you? Did you meet uh, with others after this? You know, what happened is I have a friend of mine. He's an old man. He's, he's like 80 years old. His name is Sabah. And he he always comes out with me, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's uh, he's a Christian background, uh, but he loves to minister to Muslims. And so he comes out with me and he went and talked to her and and, and she's saying this guy's a chef, a chef and saying all these things that Muhammad and all. And and but he said to her, he said, but Muhammad did marry a six year old girl. And, you know, she said, like in can it's bad. You know. And I, does that mean that she was had had her, her period? Is that what that means? Yes, and and you will hear this argument, by the way, a lot. Yeah. Okay. So that's what her. I so said she's six years old. I said, oh yeah, but she was not prepubescent. She had had her period. You know, to where he was able to talk to her a little bit. She was furious with me. She didn't want to talk to me, but it did open the door for him to talk to her a little bit. So and she did send some guys. <laughs> they came later. Dude, they were ready. They were furious with me. They say, How dare you talk to a woman? How dare you talk? And I said, dude, I was talking, and she started telling me to shut up, you know. 
<laughs> so anyway, yeah. that that was a little bit funny incident there. So, I mean, obviously, uh, just in response to uh, this claim about age of puberty, there is no indication whatsoever from the Islamic own sources that that was the case. And just for the benefit of those of you who are watching right now, uh, I did a series on this with David Wood that will be published soon. And we did cover some of these claims. For instance, Chris Yande Jr. is, is asking uh, us to also clarify the fact that our Muslim friends are going to tell you that uh, Mary, uh, for instance, was young, was 12. Uh, and in fact, they, they use a ridiculous age for Joseph. Uh, I think somebody says 90 at some 90. point. And uh, Rachel uh, was three years of age when she married, and uh, that's not true at all. There, there is nothing in the Bible that even comes close to this. And even if culturally speaking, let's say in those days, uh, you know, age 12, 13, 14, um, you know, these this claims are made specifically against Mary and Rachel. Show me anything to prove such a thing. And, uh, you know, the, the whole idea is that we are not talking about the Bible. We're not talking about Mary. We're not talking about Rachel. Since when that was of importance anyway? I, I thought you told me the Bible is corrupt. So how come this is uh, important for you right now? And somehow you want to turn the table and focus on something that is not even close to what the Islamic documentation have stated. Aisha herself, by the way, stated that about her age. And she also stated about her memory, a uh, recollection of things. So... People can watch all of that uh, when we do uh, release the show. But there are many uh, uh, obvious uh, references to these things available on the net when it comes to how Aisha herself uh, responded to, uh, or I should say, clarified her age. Yeah. But, um, it's, yeah, go ahead, brother. There's a, there are some Catholic, um, I don't want to say Catholic, there, there, there are these, they're not Gnostic, but they're just borderline Gnostic books that talk about mary and this age thing uh the 90 years old or something like that first of all that's not recognized you know as scripture it's not in the bible but if you're going to take it especially if it's a catholic source you have another issue to deal with and that is that the catholics believe that mary was a perpetual virgin so if he was nine years old he never had sex with her <laughs> but you know it's very easily disproved that it's that's not the case because Joseph was there when Jesus was 12 years old. You know, if he was 90 years old, went to Egypt, came back when he was 12. That means that Joseph would have been 102 years old, you know, and, uh, you know, walking all the way back to Jerusalem uh, you know, from Jerusalem, walking to Nazareth, getting stuck in when they find out that Jesus is not with them, going back to Jerusalem, walking around for three days and then find when he's 101 years old and so you know but anyway we uh, yeah again brother like i said it's just out of desperation people try to grasp uh you know on a straw just to find anything they can use to distract from this disaster okay it's a disaster let's face it why is it dis disaster because we're talking about a man that allegedly uh he is the model for mankind what model Seriously, what model? I mean, yeah. model for what? For for marrying a child who was six six years old? Model for what? For killing innocent people? Model for what? For uh, fighting people for their rights uh, to to express their opinion and religion and and follow their own desires? And he's just forcing them to follow Islam or get killed. I mean, what model? I mean, I don't understand it. And here is what what aggravates me the most is that we have these liberal platforms that attack you, attack me, attack David Wood, attack others uh, for stating the obvious. And somehow these things, they have no issue with it. You know, they just cover, you know, the topic, you know, turn the blind eye and just move on. You know, you know, because Satan doesn't Satan doesn't fight himself. <laughs> he, he's Antichrist. And, 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 you know, the thing that the liberals and right now in America, you know, I had, uh, there was the guy Daniel Scott once said, he said liberalism and Islam are married together right now because they both perceive the same enemy, and that is Christ. And so I'm sorry, it, it, it's Antichrist. That's the whole name of the game, you know, and so that's why they join forces. They don't agree on anything, but except that they are Antichrist. And so, yeah. Okay, this okay. next 
I, What's I, the next one? I, I took all the F words out. There were several F words. And so I have a file of the F words. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. If anyone wants the original, contact Hossein and <laughs> I've got just go to my Facebook. I got I got F words you can't believe. But anyway, yeah, this was a Friday too. This was a crazy Friday, man. So yeah, yeah. So uh I I wanna I wanna welcome uh, a friend of ours, uh Shafraz Hossein. Uh if you're saying that we are hypocrites. Uh, you have no idea how hypocritical you are yourself because we are talking about your own sources and your own profit. That's how hypocritical you are. You are an ignorant person who doesn't know anything about your own sources. So hypocrisy is obvious in your reaction. So once you go and read your own sources first, come and refute your own sources and show us where we went wrong because we are basically presenting to you what Islamic sources stated about this whole event of a 54-year-old old man marrying a nine-year-old child. That's it. That's the story. I mean, if you're denying it, you are not a good Muslim. Sorry, Shafraz. You're obviously a bad Muslim. Come to Jesus. All right, brother. Let me show it. Yes. Okay, I'm looking at you. Don't do what I turn around. Don't, I don't speak, boss me around. Speak, don't I boss speak, me around. When I, speak, when I, speak, I love you. you. I'm here to tell you about Jesus, man, to save you from going to hell. I used to be a Muslim. I used to be a Muslim. You're going to go to hell. Muhammad said, I can't save you. Muhammad said, I can't save you. Muhammad married a six year old girl. Muhammad married a six year old girl when he's 51. You see? You see? You see? <laughs> see what? This, this project of yours is. is Are you? Muslim? Of course, Alhamdulillah. Do you believe Muhammad married a six-year-old girl when he was 51? Is that okay with you? What if somebody wants to marry your granddaughter? You I don't want to knock you down. Muhammad said so. I don't want it's to knock you down. You're knock lying. Me, knock me down. You're Habibi. lying. Knock me down. Six years old. So apparently Sorry. he... Yeah, you probably use the F word here, I think, I guess. I think that's where I... <laughs> okay. I think oh, it gets stuck. Been... Let's see. Yeah, if you want to advance it a little bit, yeah. But it's okay. You can You can tell us what happened in the conversation. He seems to be really irritated. Yeah, actually, I kind of... Dude, I wonder why it's had that. Let me start again. Oh, can I take it out and go out? I, I kind of like to see it because there's a little bit of a confrontation there. Sure. Let me go try ahead. to take it off and then try to take it in again. Sure. Okay. Okay. Remove from studio. Okay. Share screen. Oops. Wrong thing here. Yeah. This is actually one of my. Uh... <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah, this one. Yeah. Try that one. Sir. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm looking at you. The 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 don't don't, don't do what I turn don't when don't I boss me around. Speak, don't I boss speak, me around. When I speak, I love you. I'm here to tell you about Jesus, man, to save you from going to hell. I used to be a Muslim. I used to be a Muslim. You're going to go to hell. Muhammad said, I can't save you. Muhammad said, I can't save you. Muhammad married a six-year-old girl. Muhammad married a six-year-old girl when he's 51. You see? You see? You see? See what? This, this project of yours is, is... Are you Muslim? Of course, Alhamdulillah. Do you believe Muhammad married a six-year-old girl when he was 51? Is that okay with you? What if somebody wants to marry your granddaughter? You I don't want to knock you down. Muhammad said so. I don't want to knock you down. You're knock lying. Me, knock me down. You're Habibi. lying. Knock me down. Six years old. Yeah, that is where he said the F word. Let me see. Oh. Yeah, it's okay, brother. I mean, it's getting stuck. Uh, so just uh, just uh, unpack for us what happened. Okay. All right. Uh, 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 can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. 
Yeah, what happens is uh, he, he then takes a Bible and he throws it. He gets really mad and he says, you, you know, he says the F word several times. And he says, you know what? They could kill you for this. They could kill you for saying something like this. And I said, for, for, for saying, and I asked him, who's going to kill me? You know, and uh, by the way, Truth Defender was listening in on this when that happened. And he came, Truth Defender, you know him. He came and he, when he heard that guy say, uh, you know, they could kill you for this. He came and he, uh, he, he was at a gym nearby and he, he stood next to me then. And when this guy came out, you know what? The guy, this guy came and he stole my phone. He stole my phone and went to his car. <laughs> what Tooth Defender went and put a shopping cart behind his car to, so that he couldn't drive away because he had my phone, you know? And the guy calls the police and says that we're holding him hostage. <laughs> There was a shopping cart behind his car. The police came, man. It was unbelievable, man. And then truth to... It was... It, uh, I got videos. It's all on video, man. It's all on video. But, man... So, so what happened when the police came and he has your phone, basically? Uh, well, truth... De what truth defender... Other guys got involved too, okay? The bookstore and everything came and they were talking about, yeah, this guy's a real jerk, man, or, about me, you know? And then Truth Defender went and just walked around and then ran right by and grabbed my phone from the guy's hand and came and gave it to me, gave it back to me. And then this guy comes up to Truth Defender. I don't know if you know Truth Defender. He's really big because he works out a lot, you know? And he says to Truth Defender, you name the time, you name the place. And then, and then Truth Defender says, right here, right now. And he says, no, no, not right here or now. <laughs> it was so what was the reaction to the story then? I mean, uh, the fact that there is another distraction, another basically uh, an act and an attempt to divert. Yeah. Well, you know what? He, he obviously didn't know. You know, and I was going to show him in the Quran, Surah 65, verse 4, about about the uh, the ones who haven't menstruated yet, that you can divorce, marry, and remarry uh, these girls before they even reach puberty. I was going to, and he's saying, you're saying this is in the Quran? You know, and, and he was yanking, trying to get the Quran away from me. This guy was violent, man. And he was like, oh, he was he was so demonized. He was so angry. And uh, and so uh, and so I told you know, I was going to show him 65 four, but he wouldn't let me. He wouldn't stop. And I said, come back. And he said, uh, you know, he, he started cussing at me and stuff. And so he didn't. He he did come back when Truth Defender was. But Truth Defender was already there. And two other Christians were this couple, this nice little American couple that always walks by when stuff like this happens. They were standing there and they were just praying, you know. And oh, it was wild. Everybody in the mall was watching. <laughs> And you know what? At the end, the police said I didn't do nothing wrong. He said he has the right to do what he's doing and everything. You know, it was the next time that the police came and they kicked me out. But this time they said I was fine. Everything's on video, too. Everything's on video. But anyway, the main thing is this guy didn't know. He didn't right. know. He was shocked. He was shocked that somebody would say that about Muhammad, that he married a six-year-old girl. He was shocked. He was. I mean, it's obvious uh, how irritated he was, and uh, you know, uh, let me ask you a question. You know about this. Um, uh, you know, whether in your own uh, uh, upbringing or maybe the upbringing of others, uh, like you have contacts with people, for instance, in the Middle East, and uh, you know, when you are a Muslim today, I mean, uh, do you have any interactions with some of your friends, Muslim friends, about topics like this, and what do they say? Um, I I have. You know, some say. You know what? Girls, girl, girls just got bigger back then. Plus, they're in the desert, you know, and in the desert, women get really big, you know, really fast. And so, you know, it's not the same as now. And it's 1400 years ago. That's 1400 years ago. You know, so you don't understand. You don't understand Arabic or, or, or anything like that. And then, you know, a lot of times they just blot, flat out lie, say, no, she was 16 years old. You know, you know, they they this thing they've covered it from every angle you know the apologist but what i'm finding and what i'm shocked about is that a lot of people don't know about it this guy did not know about it now 
that kind of makes me just a tiny bit happy because that means maybe he's going to go home and look it up. And then if he's this vicious with me because I told him, maybe he's going to say, you know what? He's right. And then what is he going to do? You know? So for whatever it worth, it was this story that prompted my wife to think about Muhammad, his character, even wow. though she was angry when people were using that story to witness to her, she was uncomfortable hearing it. It opened her eyes to the truth. And it was one of those catalysts that brought her to Christ. So what, for whatever it worth, I just want you to be encouraged by that. Yeah, it breaks open the fallow ground a little bit. If they react like this, it means they didn't know. And if they didn't know, and this is the first time they heard. I mean, this guy literally said, he came this close to saying, I'm going to kill you. He came that close to telling me, I'm going to kill you for saying this. He says, you, you know, he cussed me out real good, F word and everything. You, you, we read the Quran, you moron. That's what he, that was a direct quote. We read the Quran, you moron. We know that it doesn't say that. <laughs> Wait till he finds out it does. Well, I mean, so, so. Okay, let me play the devil's advocate. Let's assume I'm telling you, well, the story is not in the Quran. Have you ever responded back and used the story of Zaid and uh, his wife, for instance, that is in the Quran? Well, what I've used is, I've just gone to 65.4. Because, you know, uh, I'm going to show you another verse. That's even better, of course, because 65.4 clearly talks about a child. But thanks to Muhammad Hijab, we understand that that could be a five-year-old girl because there's no time, there's no age limit in the hadith. It's a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Muhammad it's Hijab made it very clear. I mean, he was rebuking Muslims by telling him, "Hey, if you go to the Quran, you can marry even a one-year-old." I think he says. Yeah. So, well, Ayatollah Khomeini, of course, I know that he's that is true. Yeah. yeah so. But this is this is another lady. Uh, this was really, like I said, I really liked this lady you know as a human being and she was so sincere it, you know i don't want to get so i'm not going to show her face okay but i'll tell you i put this i posted this on my facebook and if anybody wants to watch these videos the whole videos it's on my facebook page so please go to my facebook page all of these videos unedited with f words and everything <laughs> they're there Sorry, I sorry to say it like that, but there that's what it is. So anyway, but this lady right, right here, uh, this subject you're you're talking about came up with her. So okay, so let's uh, let's watch this one. Why would Muhammad is a false prophet? Because he is, you know, he married a six-year-old girl. You know, Muhammad married a six-year-old girl named Aisha. How do you know it's right what you're talking about? Who told you? Well, I read it, you know. No. Do you, have you? It's lie. Do you know Sahih al-Bukhari? He's lying. You know Sahih al-Bukhari? I know, but he's lying. Oh, can I show you something in the Quran? Do you believe in the Quran? I'm Muslim. You're Muslim? Yeah. Can I show you something in the Quran? Yeah. Okay, let me show you in the Quran what it says. Okay, because the Quran says... Now, do you read Arabic? No. You read Arabic? Okay. ممكن أفرجيك إياه بالعربي لعاد. Okay. أنا عربي من فلسطين الحمد لله هو أنت أغلب الناس ما بحكوش معي أنت النسوان أشهر من الرجال تعرف هذه اسمها سورة الطلاق تعرف سورة الطلاق تعرف شوف أكتب في في آية أربعة أنا في سورة الطلاق آية أربعة أيها أوكي هذا موجود واللاتي شو هاي هي أيوة واللائي أي اسم شو أي اسم بإسمه من المحيد من النساء كم كم ست 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 Hey, Al-Fadi. Al-Fadi, you, you know what? I think, let me yes. just tell you, just because this is a little bit long, and uh, I want to Yeah, we need to explain to people what's going on, yeah. Yeah, 
and I, and I posted this. You know, I got almost a thousand views on this on this uh, sharing this testimony on Facebook. You know, I mean, it's the best uh, vi witnessing video I have. And it, and we spoke in Arabic about several subjects. But when it came to this subject about Aisha, you know, I showed her in the Hadith. You know, I showed her the Hadith that says Aisha says I was six and I got married and you know he had sex with me when I was nine and died when I was eighteen. I showed her the I sh she read it. And then she read 654. And 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 I explained to her what it's saying that you can marry and divorce a girl before she reaches puberty. The ones who have not yet menstruated. And I told her, I explained to her what it means. And she said, and then she goes, you know what? I only believe in the Quran. I said, the, the problem is, is if you believe in the Quran, you got a worse problem. It's worse than having a six-year-old girl because the Quran doesn't put an age limit on it. You know, it says, all it says is they haven't menstruated. It could be a three-year-old like Muhammad Hijab said, you know, or a five-year-old like Muhammad Hijab said, you know. And you know what? She stood there. We talked. I think she was shocked. I think she was shocked about you know, about beating your wife and everything like that. We got to talk about some excellent stuff. You guys, if you want to watch the whole video, it is on my Facebook page. But you know what? You know, she, she had a soft heart. And she was, you know, and she listened. And so she, she obviously didn't know about Aisha being six years old. But, you know, she heard about it. And, and you know, there, there's a place in, in the Bible, at least twice, where Jesus said to people, he says, go and learn what it means. You know, we all wanted mercy instead of sacrifice, something like that. So sometimes Jesus said to people, go and learn. He gives them some information, but they said, no, you go study it. You go find out. And that's how I kind of feel with this lady, you know. And I really, you know, I really thought it was an awesome time. We had a great discussion. She was really worried about me. She said, you better be careful <laughs> because some people could come and get you. The next day, somebody came. And, man, he was ready. Dude. You know, it was very vicious. But anyway, that that's kind of what happened with this lady, you know. So uh, I know we don't have very much time left, so I'm just going to see if I could show. How many, yeah, how many more clips are left? Um, let me see. I've got I've got about I've got about three, but but they're they're really short, you know, so. Yeah, I, we'll, we'll, we'll show them. We'll show them right now so we can finish them. But um, uh, go ahead. Uh, show the next one. OK, this this, this guy, this. Oh, oops. My browser's having trouble. Shoot. You know what? I thought my Internet here is really good. Uh, apparently, I'm having some trouble with the Internet here. Uh, if if uh, there's any concern, we can do part two if you like. I mean, that's not a problem. Okay. Okay, but I kind of want to, I'd love to show this one because. Uh, yeah, go ahead and try it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying it. Shoot. I don't know if there's another way to show it. Oh, shoot. While you're doing that, I want to just uh, point to people. Uh, some are listing already in the uh, comment section the verse 65 4, and some even are showing you what the Mufassirin, like Al Jalalain, uh, the commentator, is saying, and those for who have yet to menstruate because of their young age. Notice Al Jalalain admitted that it was the young age. That's what is meant by that verse. And that's what our brother here was trying to tell the lady concerning 65 4. Yeah, go ahead, brother. But you know, that that was kind of like when you were telling me about the about the Zainab situation, you know, with Zid and stuff. You know, it's like I think that I think what the Quran says is is much stronger, which is oh, you know, I know. I mean, what I meant is like they 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 want to avoid this topic, but you know, well, Muhammad lusted after his own son's wife. I mean, that's even uh, disastrous. You know, it's, yeah. it's like I mean, think about it. Think about it for a second. I mean, would you accept a father-in-law as a good moral example if he lusted after his own son's wife? I mean, my goodness, what kind of a moral example is that to anybody? And, and you know, and you know, what's interesting, too, about that story is that the people around him, the people around Muhammad were saying, what a pervert. You know, I mean, they he was concerned about what the people were saying. They were saying he knew he had to come up with this uh, 
adoption thing, you know, to eliminate adoption because what the people are going to say about him, you know, because of this situation. And so, and the people are, you know, that's, I want to do, a, 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 I want to do, maybe, maybe you've already done it, but a, uh, a live stream sometime just about what the people around Muhammad were saying about him. Oh, no, because, no, we'll, we'll do it together, brother. We'll do it together. You know, okay, because uh, th those people around him had more morals than he did. You know, they were yeah. saying, dude, you are sick, man. It's just like <laughs> your own daughter-in-law. So let me just try this one more time. If it doesn't work, if it doesn't work, I'm going to have to, uh, my internet. We'll do a part two. We'll do a part two. Uh, okay. you, you just go back again and ask the question a couple of more times, and we'll pray that nobody will beat you up or something like that so we can have uh, more material. <laughs> yeah, it's not working. Well, I wanted to actually show you a guy who actually spit at me. And so as a result of this, and so I had one who told me to shut up. I had one guy that was ready to beat me up there. And then we're going to, I mean, was wanting to kill me. And then I had one who spit on me. And so those are my three uh, uh, jewels of. Uh... <laughs> we'll do it next time. We'll do part two. Okay. But let me ask you this, uh, brother, uh, uh, with, with all seriousness. Um, do you feel safe? being in a place like that because you've definitely uh, uh you're getting already under the skin of many over there so how do you maintain at least the fact that you will be safe from god forbid from someone at least you know physically uh, harming you um you know i can't you know like i said i can't show you the video that, this last week it was vicious it was but you can go on my facebook page and watch it if you want it was vicious it was demonic and uh there he didn't hit me but he was ready you know and i don't know i don't know i don't know if eddie i i don't know if i can know that i won't be hit or i won't yeah i mean I'm, I'm just asking this because i want those who are watching now and will be watching later to remember to pray for your brother because you know, uh, I think these clips are clear evidence that you're not really saying anything other than what Islam is teaching. I mean, you are not inventing stories. You're not there to just pick on the prophet of Islam for no reason. You are trying to help them see for themselves something about his character. And to your surprise and to our surprise, many of them didn't even know about these stories. I mean, it's one thing to say I... I know the story and I can defend to you why Muhammad did this. At least I will be saying, okay, well, they're trying to explain. But when they don't even know it and yet they get angry at you thinking that you're inventing it, what a tragedy, you know, indeed. Well, you know what? Uh, you know, like with this last guy, you know, you, you guys, you should go on my video. You should go on my channel and watch it. You know, watch the whole thing. It is vicious. The guy got vicious. You know, the guy who we held hostage and <laughs> with a shopping cart. <laughs> but uh, um, you know what? I, I, I kind of I prefer that type of reaction to some of the other reactions like, oh, well, you just don't understand Arabic or, you know, or you know what? People back then did it. You know, it's 1400 or Yasser Qadi. What is Yasser, what did Yasser Qadi say? What did Yasser? You know, he says she was the happiest wife in the world, man. Why are you guys getting mad? She wasn't mad about it. Why are you guys getting mad about it? You know? And she was the happiest wife in the world, even though the Hadith says her hair fell out. And I used to live in the Gaza Strip. And one time we were distributing food to poor families. And there was a widow. Uh, and she had these two little girls. And, and we were distributing food to her. And we gave her this box of food. And then she brought her little girl. And she said, look at the little girl. And, and she was bald on the back of her head. Her hair had come out. And I said, what, why is your hair? What, what happened? Why is your hair come out? And, and this was during the war. And she said she would hear the tanks at night firing. The tanks and the airplane. <clears throat> and I lived there six years. It is vicious, man. The nights when the bombing and the aircraft and the jets and the bombs. It's nonstop. Nonstop. The girl was so scared her hair fell out. And that's what it says about Aisha. Aisha says her hair fell out when she moved with Muhammad. She was so terrified of what her family just did to her, you know. And so, you guys, and like I said at the beginning, 
this is a social issue. They still do this because Muhammad did it. Yeah. And so, yeah. Hey Amen. I want to ask a question from uh, uh, Michelle. Michelle Marie, uh, she's asking me uh, when I grew up a Muslim if I knew these stories about Muhammad. Absolutely, I knew these stories. And I can tell you, I never for once even questioned what Muhammad did. Never for once even thought that that was awful. Uh, you know, not at all. Not at all. I mean, because you always learn this is the prophet. He's special. You know, God uh, gave him special privileges. I'm learning lessons from his behavior. And uh, the list can go on and on and on, whether with, uh, you know, Zainab, uh, the wife of his adopted son. Well, oh, God uh, uh, nullified adoption and, and the prophet have to really sacrifice, you know, and just step in and do something like this. Or Mary and Aisha to me is like, oh, goody, I can marry a young one. You know what I mean? And that's what you were thinking. You know, you're not thinking that there is anything awful about this. So. So that's uh, unfortunately, when you are blinded, uh, you do not see the truth. You do not process the truth the way uh, it should be. Um, you know, brother, um, it, it's just an interesting thing, to be honest with you, um, because uh, this whole thing about Muhammad is, is absolutely um, devastating uh, because Muhammad is such a big deal to the Muslim world that you can really say whatever you want about Allah. If, if you're doing these videos about Allah, I don't think anybody cared. I don't even think that guy would have been upset with you or anything anyone would have even bothered to stop by. But the minute you mention Muhammad's name, it is absolutely devastating to their faith because he's the foundation that they're standing on. And you are attacking that foundation. So no surprise, brother, that they are acting and behaving the way they are behaving. Yeah. And especially yeah. when deep down inside, they know you're right. It was like this one lady a few, uh, it was about a month and a half ago, I was sitting with my, and uh, and she came, she saw my sign, and okay, I'll admit it, I have a sign that says Muhammad is a false prophet. <laughs> she saw that, and she came and took pictures of it. She said, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. And I said, yeah, who, who are you going to send to get me? You know, Who are your friends that you're going to send to get me? And I said to her, you know Muhammad married a six-year-old girl, right? And you know what? She stopped in her track. She under her conscience was pricked. I could tell because she knew that he did, and she was ashamed of it, and she couldn't defend it. You know, and so you know that's uh, you know it's like <laughs> we didn't write this. We didn't put it in the books. It's there, and I've got eleven. I've got eleven. And I know there's more, but I got 11 right here, right now, separate hadith where I just says I was six, nine, 18, six. I was six when he married me, nine when he had sex, 18 when he died. I have 11 right now, all of them sahih. And I think you and I need to really, I mean, even though I did a series with David Wood on this, it will be really helpful and powerful if the two of us will do a live stream just on these hadith and, uh, Maybe that will be part two. And if, if you are able to bring in the, the additional three videos, we can maybe start with those and then we'll begin to unpack from the uh, historical historical data uh, or documentations that we have. Um, uh, you know, Michelle also asked a good question. You know, why do you think many of them uh, do not know about these stories? So why don't you and I try to address this? So what do you think, brother, uh, is the reason behind why they don't? Um, because they're being lied to. Um, you know, the internet has made it, they can't, I mean, now it's different. Now they have to, they have to hear about it, you know, because of the internet, you know, but you know, like I'm telling you, so many of these people that I talked to didn't know, or they tell me, oh no, no, you know, uh, the one of the videos I can't show you is, uh, no, she was 16. She was 16, you know? And, uh, you know, they've been lied to. And they don't read. <laughs> Arabs don't read. <laughs> they don't even read the Quran, you know. And so that's another problem, too. Yeah. And, uh, Excellent. I mean, you, you're absolutely correct. You know, so unless you are taught this at school, you're not going to know about it. But also you have to understand, 
even if you are taught this at an Islamic school and you're a Muslim, you're not going to question it. I mean, who are you to question it? I mean, my goodness, you'll be crazy if you try to question it because you are asking for trouble. You are going to definitely uh, cause persecution to yourself. So no one questions things like this. And if you're not an Arab Muslim, basically you are just a Muslim who doesn't speak Arabic, best of luck. I mean, you don't have a way to even understand the Arabic, even if you try to read it. And you have to rely on someone teaching you this. And those who are teaching you this are not going to teach you critical thinking. They're going to tell you this is what the prophet did. And this is why no questions asked. That's it. Yeah. You know, uh, if I just say one thing about the uh, about the hadith, you know, this is because I, what I did one day is I went and looked at the Isned, you know, the chain of narrators for all the hadiths, the, the 11 hadiths about Aisha. And uh, there are some, you know, uh, some very interesting things in those isned, you know, and, uh, and among them is that it always comes before Aisha. It's all, it always comes back to Aisha, but before Aisha, it's this guy named Hisham, and then the father of Hisham. Well, those are her relatives and contemporaries so they heard it from her you see these were her contemporaries the always on the isnad it's aisha hisham and the father of hisham those were they knew her personally they heard it from her you know and so it wasn't like 300 years later like sahih al-bukhari you know bukhari it was 300 years after muhammad or not. no no these were her contemporaries who said this so if you look at the chain of narrators for all of these they always go back, Aisha, Hisham, father Hisham. And so these are her relatives uh, and, and they were her cousins, you know? And so, you know, it just kind of strengthens the case that, you know, they heard it from her. Yeah, not only that, I mean, really, if you, I mean, I, I, would, I would love one day to just take Aisha's hadith, especially when it comes to social issues and social justice. Uh, you can tell she was feeling the pain when she was saying things like this. When she talked about Muhammad punching her in the chest, you can tell this is someone was abused, you know. Uh, when, when she talked about women being beaten up and she can see green marks on their body. I mean, she was talking like someone who was really hurt by what she's seeing. And when she told Muhammad that your God hastened to uh, basically to, to uh, meet your desires, I mean, who would say something like this and they're, unless they're really baffled by how quickly things can happen to this guy? It's, it's almost like she's saying, you know, I'm not buying a thing you're saying, you know. It's like you're fabricating things and you just expect us to be dumb uh, to believe it. You know, amazing God that you have that he just whatever you want, he just does it for you immediately. I mean, that's the reaction that you have. And it's just fascinating to me. You know, uh, I, I, yeah, you go know, ahead. I did a uh, I did a live stream called Kids Say the Darndest Things. And it's about the stuff Aisha said. <laughs> She's a kid. She's six years old, seven years old. Kids say stuff. They don't have the, you know, they haven't been uh, enculturated, you know, to say, oh, you don't say that. You don't say that. They just say whatever. <laughs> so she was just like, yeah, you know, she was saying exactly what's on her mind. She said, no woman suffers like a Muslim woman. She said that, you know, I've never seen a woman suffer like the Muslim woman, you know, and the stuff that she said about about Muhammad and stuff, you know, it's it's amazing, you know, that and Muhammad said, you know, which they're all going to throw away. He says, you know, that take half of your religion from Ayesha, you know, so he gave her tremendous power. I mean, she was a 12 year old, but, you know, that's her her credibility right. is great. Yeah. Uh, Chris Buchanan, you're asking if I were to do a show uh, concerning what the Quran says about the Bible. Well, Chris, ask and you shall receive. When I was a young man, about four years ago, I did an entire series about what the Quran says to defend the Bible. So I encourage you to go to my website, syriainternational.com, uh, or go to our YouTube channel, Syria International. Go to the playlist and you'll find this. I can't remember how many videos, but it was a lot of videos. And uh, that's exactly what I did. I, I did a, a survey of what the Quran basically says to, uh, concerning 
the authenticity of the Bible. I even use commentaries and other things. So hopefully you'll find it helpful. Anything else, brother? And, uh, you know, Arabian Princess, uh, wow, it's been a while. Thank you so much. I, I never knew that you are following us also on YouTube. So praise the Lord. Uh, by the way, I mean, uh, she she's definitely uh, uh, an avid, uh, basically, supporter of GAP. Uh, I think it's called GAP, uh, a platform. I think. I think it's called GAP. Uh, are you using any other platforms? Because I would love really to uh, to utilize other platforms as well. So um, uh, I do. Uh, I've, I've been doing stuff on TikTok. Yeah, I noticed that. I mean, you're a TikTok, uh, you know, basically uh, superhero right now. So I would like to learn from you. <laughs> I had one video. Uh, I had one video uh, uh, on TikTok that went up to like 28,000 views. And it was it's always the stuff you don't expect. The stuff you think, oh, this is going to be a great hit. You get 300 views or something. Like that. But the stuff that you don't expect, you know, like... Uh, uh, once I was preaching with the cross and stuff like that, you know, because I carry a cross. And uh, so that goes, man, I got like 28,000 views on that, you know, and so. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I would love really, I'm, I'm trying to broaden the reach uh, for the sake of reaching more Muslims, of course. I mean, that's the whole idea. But, uh, you know, I want to address the idea of, of uh, many people are commenting saying, you know, because because we love them. Uh, yes, it hurts. Definitely. Uh, our intent is not to cause any harm for anyone or to hurt anyone, but but the truth hurts. But that's what Jesus says. The truth will set you free. It is the truth that will set you free, not a lie, not when I try to pamper you, not when I try to cover up what hurts your feeling. No, the truth that has to be shared in love, obviously, will set you free. And by the way, in counseling, in the world of counseling, psychological counseling, you know, they will tell you, unless you acknowledge that you have a problem, you are not going to be able to resolve the issue or face that problem and find a solution. So as long as you are denying it, you're in denial phase, you're not going to be healed from it. The moment you acknowledge there is a problem, only then you can start making some advancements and some improvements. And that's our prayer is that many of these seeds that were planted will cause people to realize you know what? There is a problem. There is a problem with my faith. There is a problem with my prophet. There is a problem with these teachings, and I need to find a way to wrestle with it, reconcile it, or leave this faith that is causing so much harm to many, you know, in the last 14 centuries. Yeah, there, you know, there's one thing that uh, I kind of, you know, there's not specifically about our subject of today, but I kind of, this whole thing about Islam and Muhammad is that I kind of feel like a little bit like, you know, the Arabs wanted to have their own, like the Jews had. You know, the Jews had all those prophets and everything. The Arabs wanted to have theirs, too. You know, we want to have our prophet. We want to have our book and everything like that. And so they came up with this thing, you know, this Muhammad and this Islam and this stuff. So they can have their competition with the Jews and the Christians and stuff like that. And, and I just, you know, what I would just want to say to the Arabs is, dude, Jesus came for you. Jesus came for you. You are a part of the promise of Abraham. God loves the Arabs. He loves the Muslims so much, you know, and you don't need to have a substitute so that you can say, oh, it belongs to us so that we're special. You are special. You are so special to God. He loves you so much. He died for you. And, you know, you don't need this, this cheap counterfeit, this cheap little counterfeit. He loves you so much. Have the real thing. The real thing is Jesus Christ. The real thing is the word of God, the Bible. You know, so anyway. Amen, brother. Amen. Well, uh, it's been a, a definitely an exciting live stream. Um, I would like really maybe next week we can come back and do part two. This time we'll go through these hadith and uh, I'll, I'll try to find any additional material uh, that can also uh, uh, make the topic even more uh, in depth, and uh, we will show that uh, indeed it's Islamic sources and uh, Sahih Hadith that have uh, acknowledged and admitted to this story and the age and everything else related to that. So, if you're open for that, brother, let's see you and I um, communicate uh, behind the scenes and uh, and decide okay. when we can do it. Hopefully, next week, if possible. Amen. 
Man, sounds great. So man. How often do you do this, uh, by the way? Is it weekly thing for you? The witnessing? Meaning going, going outside, yeah. Uh, almost every day, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. so I really would like for us to do these kind of live streams just using clips uh, because it's very powerful. It's not only you and I giving an opinion about something. You're showing people, real people, reacting to those kind of stories. So I would love it really for us to start this series that way. You know, it's uh, these clips are powerful, and at the same time, it supports what we are saying. Amen. Very good. All right, brother. Well, well, thank you so much, everyone. And I really am excited to see many of our amazing moderators here and many of uh, uh, those who are uh, able to join us. Obviously, we are doing it at a different time zone. So uh, many of the people in Europe are asleep or at least uh, barely waking up right now. Uh, but uh, we have a lot of people in Southeast Asia, of course, in Australia. And we have people in North America who are joining us as well. So uh, we thank the Lord for all of you, uh, folks. We encourage you to take these shows and just please share them with others. You know, download them, you know, uh, uh, use whatever platform you want. You have my full permission, and I'm sure the brother doesn't mind that as well, for you to share it to as many people as you like. Not for the purpose of mocking, not for the purpose of making fun of our Muslim friends, not at all. We would like for them to just at least uh, consider the fact that Jesus came to elevate their status, especially if they're women, not to denigrate them and make them uh, be treated as an object, you know, or as just a a, a, a mean or a tool for, uh, you know, gratification uh, in this case, or at least to, um, you know, really, it's it's a matter of abuse. Uh, I mean, I hate to say it, it's a, it's a matter of abuse. Uh, you know, it's just another form of abuse. That's not what the Christ is all about. Christ came to uh, save you, uh, to give you eternal life, to protect you, to elevate your status, and to honor you uh, because God made you in his image. And I'm speaking to you as a Muslim woman, by the way. God made you in his image. You are equal partner to a male. You're not a, uh, you know, a step below, as the Quran stated in chapter 4, verse 34. Uh, you're not a degree uh, below. He's not a degree above. Uh, not at all. That's not what the Bible teaches. So uh, come to Jesus. Uh, he's the only one that will give you rest. He's the only one that will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. He's the only one that can change you. And he's the only one that will guarantee you that you will have eternal life with him, that you will uh, come from death to life. You will cross from death to life. And you will enjoy eternity with him. Last word for you, brother. Hallelujah. Well, well, just when you were saying there, you know, I know that with Muslims, uh, a big concern is judgment day. You know, you're going to be on judgment day. And, you know, after you get done with the uh, al-Qabr, then you go to judgment day, you know, and the Mizan and the Sirat al-Mustaqim over the sword over hell and all this stuff. And Jesus said an amazing thing. He said, he that believes in me has passed over judgment. You passed over judgment, he who believes in me. And so come to Jesus. He was judged for you. He died for you. He loves you. And uh, thanks for having me. God bless you, man. Amen. Thank you, everyone. This is Al-Fadi over and out. God bless. Take care.